today about how being part of history became a memoir. Kennedy was the first Irish Catholic president to be voted in. And my family was all Rockefeller Republicans, okay? That's it's fine. They, that's when they were fine. Anyway, uh, my, my parents said, you know, we're going to vote for that nice Irish boy because if he gets elected, then maybe one of our Italian boys will get elected someday. But that has not happened because they've been too busy with the mob. But anyway. <laughs> and of course, it's the 60s, so it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I had two of those covered. I went to the Air Force, and the Air Force recruiter said, we have a job for you. And I said, oh, do you? I said, you know, I'm a food management major. Do you think you'd let me run one of those officers clubs? He said, sure, we let our ladies do everything. I thought, isn't that nice? And he said, and, um, and he said uh, well, yes, we can, we can, you know, let's sign you up right here. And of course, he was cute. And I said, well, all right, and I signed up. And he, then, of course, I was going to go. He said, you're going to go to o officer training school. And I said, well, what will that be like? He said, well, you won't have any problem there. O.T. Pilato, you flunked this test on the Strategic Air Command, and you have got to pass it because you've got so many gigs now that, you know, <laughs> it was very chancy, okay, that I was going to pass. But I thought, hell, you're not going to get me out of here. Okay, anyway, he said, well, look, here's, what, here's, what, here's how it goes. It's like football, Angel. There's offense and there's defense. And the Strategic Air Command is defense. And you see, tact is offense. And I said, yes, sir. And he sees this blank look come over my face. He said, do you know anything about football? And I said, well, uh, sir, I know there's two teams. And uh, whoever gets the most points wins. And he said, oh, my god. He said, you're not going to be my summa cum laude in Air Force. And I said, well, sir, do you think I can pass? Well, I did pass it. Thank God I stood up nights and, and passed the test. And uh, my, uh, the other thing that you did at OTS was you filled out a dream sheet. Now, the dream sheet, I found out later, was given to you for psychological reasons, OK? They asked you, where would you like to go? Okay, and I said, oh, someplace sunny, you know, because I didn't like the I didn't like the snow in Michigan, and I didn't like the snow in Rochester, and I put someplace sunny, and then my first assignment was to the Strategic Air Command in Omaha, Nebraska, and I was so glad I passed that test. Well, I got four greetings, four assignments while I was in the Air Force, and here's the, my very first greeting when I got to Omaha, Nebraska. So you're going to be my assistant. They said they were sending me an assistant, but I didn't know it was going to be a girl. And I said, well, you know, I'm a food management major, and, and I think I could be a real help, sir. Here's my orders, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, while I was there, I, they finally did give me some job to do. I found out that one of the sergeants was stealing. And I thought, well, you can't do this. And I confronted the sergeant. And uh, he said, Lieutenant, you just keep your WAP lieutenant hands off my time card. And, for those of you who don't know, WAP is not a very good word to tell an Italian. But anyway, uh, one of the full colonels said, how are things going, Angel? He's kind of a father type. And I told him all about the sergeant. And I thought, things are going to be cleared up here. Well, two weeks, I was reassigned. <laughs> and so I got, I got assigned to Udarn. Well, here we go again. Another woman. They thought I was going to put flowers in the urinals, okay? They thought I was going to stop their little go-go dancers and their little uh, <clears throat> strippers on Friday night and all that. And I said, no, there won't be any of that. I'm an officer first, you know, don't be a problem. Well, I'm going to tell you, they finally got used to me. I was at Udorn Rachitani Air Base on the border of Laos. Most of you know where that is because you're all Vietnam veterans. And that's my F-4s. Those were my guys, they were flying F-4s. I loved them, I loved the roar of the plane. They're loaded to bear. And at my time in 1972 is when they started rebombing uh, North Vietnam. And every time those guys shot down a MiG, those guys decided to drive their truck up the front stairs of my officer's club and park their car right in the lobby. Okay, and I thought, there goes the rug, okay? Well, at any rate, this kept happening. 
And then, of course, they would try to figure out how to get that baby out. I was called at 3 o'clock in the morning one time. They wanted to knock the wall down because they wanted to bring their truck in. And I said, yeah, just wait till morning. All right, and then they sobered up and took the car out. Uh, they, they had to get a tow truck to get that, that guy out. Well, after all this happened, every truck every other day was going in my club. They finally nicknamed the club Angel's Truck Stop. <laughs> and they made me a great big sign, said Angel's Truck Stop. Somebody stole it. I wish we could find it again, but anyway, they stole it.